So now that we've got our data into our Power BI report and we've familiarized ourselves with Power Query a bit more, we are ready to start building some visuals in our actual report. So what we need to do is just make sure we are on the right report view. As you can see over the left here, we are in just that. Our canvas is currently blank, so we're ready to start adding visuals. It's worth mentioning we've got this filters pane here. So we have the ability to apply filters to either visuals or the page as a whole, and even filters on pages or filters on all pages, should I say, throughout the report. But we'll just jump over that. We'll go to our visualizations pane, and I'm gonna simply select a stacked column chart. And let's just drag that into the center of the screen, just so it's a bit easier to see. And of course, to start off with, it's blank and it's wanting us to put some fields in here. Having got the visual selected, you can see we now have some options available. We've got an x-axis, a y-axis, a legend, and some other, other details as well. But to keep this nice and simple, I'm just gonna expand our tasks table, and I'm simply gonna drag the date raised, date column into our x-axis. And you've probably seen an update there, but for those not familiar, the x-axis is simply the horizontal, and the y is the vertical. And to get some data in there, I'm simply going to just drag in task ID. So as you get more advanced, you can create, of course, measures uh, to give you the, the count of tasks. But the benefit of Power BI here is by simply dragging in task ID, you can see it's given us a count of task ID. So it gives us the same result, given us simply you know, the total number of rows available in that table, which you can see on the left here, it's now grouped by our date raised. What's really useful in Power BI Gain is that by default, it will create this date hierarchy for you. And you can see we've got year, month, or year, quarter, month, and day. If you didn't want this and you just simply wanted the date, just do that selection as you saw me do there. And you can now see you have all of your data across each individual day. Uh, for us, our data is a bit consistent, shall we say, uh, and probably not the most useful view overall anyway. So what I wanna do is go back into that down arrow, date hierarchy, and you can see it's now been organized like that for us as well. With these being interactive charts, we have the ability here to drill into the data. So at the moment we're at year. If we were to go into this double arrow, you can see how we've now gone down into quarters and we're also able to go into months. However, the problem with this is everything has been grouped into a applicable month. So if we were to go um, up a level using the drill up icon, you can see we've got simply quarter one, three and four organized by quarter number. If, however, we go right back up to the top again, but this time we'll use the, the sort of pitchfork be it icon, you can see we we're gonna expand all down each level. So we'll click onto that once, and you can now see we've got our quarters grouped by year, which again, gives it a lot more sort of valuable insight really, because we can see quarter three and four actually belong to 2023, rather than quarter one was in 2024. If we go down that further, we can now see what is turning out to be quite a useful view. So we've got months grouped by quarter and also grouped by year. However, what well, you may have importance for this, I generally like to group months by year, so I want to remove the quarter. In order to do that, all I need to do is go to the hierarchy in the x-axis and simply click the x beside quarter, and you can see that's been updated in that chart for me. And it's worth pointing out at this point, again, because we're using um, dummy data, we've got 10 straight across the board. I'm sure if you're, um, you're connecting to actual real data, uh, you'll have something a bit more visually appealing than we do here at the moment. Let's just do a couple of updates to the chart just to cover off the formatting. So everything we've been doing at the moment has been in the uh, visual uh, option, should we say, uh, or of the pane. What we're going to do is just navigate to the format tool, which is the paintbrush. And you can see it's from here. We have a range of options available to us. I won't go into all of these in great detail, and I'm sure I'll let, well, I'll let you, of course, explore these on your own. But a couple of formatting preferences I have is to go into the x-axis, and I just want to remove title. So you can see we've got month at the moment. So you can just go to help do the toggle button to remove the title. Alternatively, you could if I turn it back on again, you could put your own custom text here if you didn't like the default of month. I'm simply gonna just re reflect that also for the Y axis, so turning off title. Let's close that. 
And as you'll have seen in there as well, you have the ability to play around with the value formatting of your text and so on and so forth, as you'd probably expect. The last thing I'm going to do is just go into the general item tab, go into title and just give this a more reflective title. So let's call this total tasks by month. I'm then going to just, again, personal preference, change the font and the size. And I like to align at center. And you can see, although basic, we have now added our very first chart into our report. So congratulations, we have now added and formatted our first chart in this Power BI report. So what you might want to do at this stage is you're likely gonna to want to add other visuals. So one important thing or tip should I say to remember is to make sure that you deselect your current chart before adding another. Because as you can see at the moment, I have our chart selected. If I was to go and try and add a pie chart, you can see it's gonna update the form or the chart type for our existing visual. So this may have use to you if you've suddenly decided you want to change the chart type. However, I'm sure there's gonna be many scenarios where you forget to deselect this and have this problem, but just simply, if you undo it, first make sure you haven't got your existing chart selected uh, before then obviously selecting your next chart you want to add. And then of course, from here, you can continue to add more visuals to it. So I'm going for priority, task ID as well. And you can see we've already now added another chart. Uh, I didn't plan to go this far, but it's worth just going into the formatting. So you can see lots of options available. In terms of detailed labels, I quite like the labels to be on the inside. Um, and also I don't like the decimal place on the percentage. So we can quickly cover that off by going into detailed labels. Position, I want them to be on the inside. Values, I then want to go down here and you can see we've got two options. Value decimal places, so that's for the actual numbers and the percentage decimal places is of course for your percentages. So if you want to have only one decimal place, you can do a one. However, if you want zero like my suggestion, you can update it there. And of course, another thing you might want to change is the legend. So I quite like to remove this title. So what you need to do is go to legend, remove the title, and very lastly now, on the subject of title, let's just go and call this Total Tasks by Priority. <clears throat> let's change the font and the size again, align the center. So there we go. We've now actually got two visuals. The plan in this video was to do just the one, uh, but hopefully this has also demonstrated how quickly you can add additional visuals to your report. So if you haven't been following, a lot, following along, now's probably a good time to have a play around, get some of your data in there and see if you too can start adding your very first visuals to the Power BI report. If you have any questions at all with this or future videos, please just drop a comment below the applicable video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And lastly, if you do enjoy these videos, please don't forget to hit that like button. It's not only greatly appreciated by me, but it does help that all important YouTube algorithm enabling other people to also find these videos as well.